Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel called Zanana Reacts where I learn all things parallel with your help and I just share my Slovak Central European point of view and in today's video we're going to be doing part two to the Runview show of GC Deepak and uh, uh, we're just going to pick up where we left off. I'm quite uh, excited to continue so far in the part one. I'll try to link it up here. It's been a very a uh, very interesting conversation and before we get into the part two please like this video and click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification thank you so much for your support i just say let's continue where we left off primary thing being money uh if they're given even 70 to 80 percent of the money that they're making there they'll come yeah they'll certainly come everything else is solvable agar paisa hai bharat ki tarah kahi nahi jee sakte yeah because you get access to a lot of things in terms of support systems yeah. i am able to pursue whatever i can because of the support system that i managed to create yeah. others i'll be limited only to one thing right. yeah times are changing man uh okay again don't think too much about this right so quick answers what do the following lack mumbai space delhi uh, a human touch everything is too material It's a bit of aggression and uh, agar kisi ka accident ho jata hai तो इमीडिएटली भाग के उनको हेल्प करने वाला कोई नहीं आएगा दैट इज दिस अनफॉर्चुनेट कॉन्ट्री टू मुंबई एक्सैक्टली व्हाट आई सेइंग भारत आई से अ लॉन्ग टर्म विजन फॉर द नेक्स्ट 100 इयर्स रियली 100% लेट्स टैकल दैट एज वेल इन दिस एपिसोड द फाइव साउदर्न स्टेट्स अह दे कुड डू विद मोर वाटर दैट्स द आंसर यस ओके दैट्स इट यस एज सिंपल एज दैट यस दे कुड डू विद मोर वाटर ओके देन द इकॉनमी ऑफ द साउथ कैन बी इवन मोर सेल्फ सफिशिएंट ओके जे साई दीपक्स हार्ट <laughs> What does it lack? Uh, patience for laziness and mediocrity. Ooh, Ooh okay. Oh God. Jay Sai Deepak's wardrobe. Uh, it is. I've populated it with brands for the last five years. But what does it lack? What does it lack? What does it lack? Uh, perhaps a few more three pieces. Okay. Yeah. Success. You mean definition or what does it lack? What does success lack? What does success lack? Uh, the big picture. Get something greater than yourself. Yes, that it's never a solo act. To break the tension, you know, I'm going to ask about perfumes and shoes. <laughs> okay. Perfumes and shoes say a lot about someone's character. Okay. One of the most character-defining pair of shoes and the most character-defining bottle of perfume that you've ever owned. I have zero interest in brands. Previously, it was Bata. Now it's moved to Hush Puppies. That's yeah. it. No, that's fine. That's the answer. Okay. So I have no interest. perfumes when someone gifts or my wife purchases for me. Outside of that, I have zero idea. But what do you like putting on yourself? Musk. Musk. Little Indian eyes. That's why. Possible. Little, little Indian. It water. has an earthy flavor to it. Hmm. Okay. Five of India's biggest gifts to the world are dharma, uh, respect for prakriti, our art forms, family as an institution, and uh, I'd say respect for non-human beings comes with us. Okay, mm -hmm. and just to add to what you said in the past, the similarity between Hinduism and Buddhism is not a matter of discovery. I'd say it's the most obvious. Mm. Okay, you're saying it's basically the same thing. I'd say. It's taken some essence, and it's very packaged itself. It's also a question of how it has been projected, as opposed to what it truly is. Mm -hmm. How Buddha actually, uh, let's say, uh, propagated it from how Richard Gere sees it is very different. Mm. Okay, uh, we've had Acharya Prashant on the show, who has said that Buddhism, in many ways, is the essence of what the Vedas actually said. Not too sure of that. Okay, all right. Interesting. Okay, if J. S. I. Deepak were buried alive, mm -hmm. sorry, not buried alive. That's please commit it. <laughs> At <laughs> least okay, commit me. See, that's why WWE fan. <laughs> Just sitting at some corner of my head. <laughs> no man. The coffin match. <laughs> yeah. Pain coming out of it. <laughs> yeah. God, dude, love the Undertaker. Okay. If J. S. I. Deepak were buried, yeah. what would his tombstone say? My tombstone say, "Burn me, please." Jai Shri Ram. Exactly. <laughs> That's yeah. it. That's, That's it. not the podcast. <laughs> That's <laughs> segment. Yeah, this past segment. Right. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. Why don't you draw a bit of a trajectory of the current government over the rest of the twenties, as well as the thirties, both based on interior narratives and exterior narratives? Because um, I think we had Rajiv Malhotra on the show, mm -hmm. who suggested that possibly again, there's no other word to describe the system. The closest word is dictatorship. Right. But uh, I think the word he uses is single party state. Right. Uh, are we going there? Like, are we going to work because there's no opposition? Like, the closest person who has even a bit of bite is probably, uh, I mean, the party is AAP, hmm. and there's nothing else which is even near. It'll bite the dust sooner than we realize. The AAP? Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
there's a point at which you need to rein in uh, your hyperbole and exaggeration. You've given yourself uh, labels such as he is the current day Mahatma Gandhi. This and that. Come on, yeah, who's going to believe this? And of course, Delhi walas are not going to believe this. They're way too smart for this, right? So uh, the problem is this: um, there is a huge paucity of good options uh, as in in the opposition. And I, I think as it was Anand Ranganathan who said this, was a dear friend who said this that. Uh, Uh, the bjp at least mr modi is blessed with a joke of an opposition in his horoscope mm. okay so that's true it's un- unfortunate it's unbelievable circumstances do create a uh, destiny correct and this is true mm. look at it where are the options here and surely it can't be anybody's case that the government is getting everything right it's not possible humanly human error is bound to happen so that means people aren't paying attention to policy people aren't paying attention to actual issues they are busy playing identity politics to bring him down saying that he is anti anything that's not democracy him. anti free speech what are you saying who's going to buy this who's going to buy this the number of articles which are written day in and day out i mean who which of these people has been jailed for writing against mr modi it may have happened for any other bjp person but not for mr modi by the way it could have happened at the state level it could have happened for anybody else not for him i'm not going to defend him for anything i'm just saying that choose your issues well at least think through what you're saying the chances of india becoming a single party state almost like china or let's say a single party democracy as oxymoronic as it sounds like singapore It's not. Uh, it's not. I don't think it's. It's going to happen because you see, Singapore is a city state. Size plays a role. Number of options plays a role. Your ability to curb and finish your political opponents, all of that plays a huge role. That's not going to happen here. Okay. And importantly, as in every political party, there are huge differences of opinion in every party. Okay. So it's a question of how those differences of opinion are managed, right? Uh, there was a point when the Congress uh, in the 1920s and 30s had no alternative. Okay. but the swaraj party came outside of it established by uh, chitranjan das deshbandhu and uh, motilal nehru right when they realized that uh, the non cooperation movement isn't taking the congress anywhere so sometimes it may not be an opposition from the outside it may also happen as a consequences of differences of opinion from within let me clarify i'm not hinting at anything i'm just saying trajectories kaise ho sakte yeah, hai i think to be able to predict the future you need to study history in detail exactly. so that's why exactly okay. so i am basically saying uh, that <clears throat> more and more people who are interested in delivering the goods on the cultural side on the civilizational side may say vikas must go hand in hand with civilizational security especially with too many problems uh, let's say rearing their heads okay and uh, apart from that uh, the larger revisitation that the entire world will go through is revisiting the model of democracy as it stands i'm not saying it will move to dictatorship or whatever it may want to go with some kind of what i call enlightened democracy which is exactly what the rajya sabha was meant to do so the britishers they designed it in such a way that lok sabha will accommodate all the popular voices to shut up the congress yahan pe aake chilla lo tum i'll give you a place to shout but your policy decisions will be vetoed by rajya sabha because that will be populated by bureaucrats and subject matter experts which is why we have a policy even today of nominating experts from different fields as part of rajya sabha saying the masses are represented here the intelligence will be represented here we may look at a situation where the rajya sabha or a rajya sabha like model finds greater say in policy making and what not will that truly happen see these things can't be designed these things are usually organic it's a matter of a particular let's say spark where people realize no we need a different model now if this is not throwing up enough options two days ago uh, anand and i had the good fortune or let's say of sharing space at uh, the srcc business conclave uh, with mr manishankar ayer uh, mr salman khushreed and mr uh, sudhinder kulkarni the topic of the entire debate was western narrative about bharat and indian narrative about bharat that was the discussion us topic maybe they managed to bring in bjp versus congress the entire thing was different it was about media narratives it's about how the west sees us it's about how we see them in what context the bbc documentary the uh, the downright insulting caricatures during covid or the chandrayaan and so on and so forth where they still think of us as a country of snake charmers and what not and what's wrong with being a snake charmer sorry so these are the kind of caricatures that we were hoping to discuss it became about bjp versus congress within 10 minutes so i and the best part is the audience was tired of it yeah they like mudde pe baat karo talk about the issue we are not interested in this what about it anymore give us better content give us better issues to deal with that is what will push the conversation on democracy mm. okay uh still want a deeper picture of things let's talk from a very specific angle there are four or five people within the bjp who could be sort of next pm candidates uh modi ji probably has four years left and then at some point he's going to take a step back everyone anticipates that as well his whole uh, kind of basis and this is what i learned from sandeep sanyal is that he wants to focus on infrastructure right someone will have to take the game forward right simple question who's the next pm what's the future of the bjp when there is no opposition or quality opposition the only opposition that can theoretically come from then is from within the society where the society says we need one more or from within the existing power structure 
So this is a, a theoretical projection, not based on any first-hand knowledge and based on what has happened in the past. If that were to happen, I would see the, the gradual formation of what I call the Narandal and the Garamdal within the BJP. The Narandal focuses only on infrastructure, uh, investment, all this. The Garamdal saying, Patrao ho hai, stone pelting ho hai, har vande Bharat Express pe patthar phekhe ja And you have uh, people asserting themselves in the most vigilante fashions possible. And you're looking at illegal migration. You're looking at China. You're looking at the changing demographic balance in border districts and close to 200 districts. Are we then creating Vikas where a, a country with fantastic infrastructure is ripe for taking over? Effectively, what's happening with Europe? First world infrastructure being handed over to third world immigrants, especially from the Middle East. Okay? Or even for that matter, from Pakistan specifically. Right? So if you have to look at a situation which you don't want, that situation is Europe. Where you've got Vikas, but you have zero cultural moorings or civilizational identity anymore. Thanks to their hyper focus on secularism. Where they've killed their own identity. And they, they don't have an identity to speak of. And when identity does not exist, the human consciousness will be filled with something else because vacuum cannot exist. Either it's gold or garbage. It's for you to decide. right? So this Narandal Garandal fight may at some point come to the fore. And that may result in Okay, can I just like I I do full I don't agree. This is this is a very generalized statement about Europe. Uh so you have to under like we've established that there is a US that has Basically, by Woodrow Wilson, he encouraged the basically what's now, now known as the European Union. So, European Union has been a product or project, I like to call it, of the USA. That is the bottom line. So, whatever we get in Europe, it's kind of like first happens in the US and then it's I don't want to use the word imported because I don't think it's right. Like, because it's not like you're, it's, you're deliberately doing that. It just comes here, right? So when you have a vote culture and the US, it can go to real, real extremes and it will hit this part of the world. But when it comes to Europe, you have to understand that Europe is not one country. This Europe is not India. This is no United uh, States of Europe type of situation happening. European Union was first and foremost created for economical benefit. Only later it was created for like common policy laws, which is biting it in the butt. And it, I don't think it's effective. And if it is to dismantle, it will be for these things only. And the reason why it does not work is because we are very different culture in every different state. I know you have a different cultures than India, but trust me, it's not the same. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm positive the, the, the because of how many different cultural differences I have observed. It's just different way of thinking. So you came uh, would adopt vocism, but Europe in general, I believe, looking at a context is actually quite conservative. I think even UK is very conservative, I, I would say. I th and then, so you have the Western Europe, where you have UK, France, Germany, etc. Uh, the the key countries. Yes, you would have the, the vocism. Then you have Northern Europe. Nordic's gone a bit crazy when it comes to being too liberal. I think that they are the most liberal, but just so you know how different this is, I personally don't care about Nordics. I don't really know much about it. They don't impact, I feel, my life. Don't care. I just don't care at all, right? So, so when people are putting these types of generalizations, and then when I see them reflected bad in the comments, it doesn't sit well with me because that's just not how it works. Central Europe, where I'm from, Slovakia, especially Slovakia, Poland, Hungary, I think Czech would be the Republic, the most liberal, to very conservative nations. And they are fighting. So like Poland is fighting with the, with the European on liberal policies because they don't agree. But, you know, like 
it, this is kind of what it is. We do not adopt it to the extreme ever that's in the US. I feel like you can find also sorts of crazy in the States, but in Europe, we are like, English don't like the Americans. Americans love the English, right? So whatever Americans come up with, British usually roll their eyes and they're like, oh my God, you know, I don't want to, you know, what on earth? So we are way, like, if he thinks that this is liberalism, I don't think he knows what he's talking about. The biggest liberalism in Europe is, I think, in um, in, in the Nordics. I don't think anywhere else. I think we're still miles away from whatever is happening in the, in the U.S. I'm not saying it's not present um, because it started to you could start to feel it also in Slovakia, which is quite shocking because it's very, Slovakia is a very Catholic country, very conservative, very, very conservative. So yeah, I, 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 I don't think that destruction, and I might be short-sighted, maybe obviously I don't know things, is as close as people might think. It's, I, I, I straight out say, I absolutely do not believe that. Um, but uh, anything can happen, right? In changing the outlook of the party, or it could result in other possibilities. I hope it results in, let's say, a reorientation of the apparatus for a good reason, because it's now become a winning machine, right? For the most part, with, of course, state-wise, they have lost a few. And with that traction momentum, I think it's it would be a, a tragedy if that momentum is cut short because of irreconcilable differences with him on these aspects. So they have to start accommodating it. Mm. So somewhere I'd say uh, a yogi's approach to a yogi's approach to law and order, okay, uh, the ins continued insistence on infrastructure, right? Both these may have to go hand in hand. You have to realize that not only has Uttar Pradesh improved in the context of law and order from 2017, it's also done really well in terms of infrastructure. By the way, it's just that I think his branding is extremely uh, intense for the left wing that they push certain that. What's the population of Uttar Pradesh? 25 crores, mm. close to that. Mm. Okay. But at 1.4 billion, you're looking at at least 20 crores. Hmm. Which state in this country can handle that kind of population? And this is a state which is unfortunately previously called one of the Bimanu states. Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Uttar Pradesh. Right? He, he did not inherit a Gujarat. He inherited an Uttar Pradesh. After Mayavati and Samajwadi party. Right? People living in Noida will tell you that there were massive power cuts. And every house had to have either a generator or an inverter depending on what they could afford. That's changed. Roads have become safer and better. Police stations are more approachable. Previously, a police station in Uttar Pradesh was a difficult place to go to. You never knew how you'd be treated. That has changed. Uh, Samsung wanted to move out of Noida because they weren't sure of how the new establishment would uh, handle, in, let's say, investment. He convinced them to stay back, the manufacturing facility from what I understand. A delegation comes from Iran. He brings together that delegation with artists uh, in Uttar Pradesh of Shia Persian origin and makes them meet each other. And he says, uh, you know what, if you have any problems investing in the state, I'm available, here's a hotline. This is what I've heard from reliable journalists. Okay, So clearly he seems to be able to balance both sides. You know, in a state like Uttar Pradesh with this huge legacy, let's not forget that Ram Bhumi happened in Uttar Pradesh. It, therefore, there are very clear communal tensions in the state in terms of legacy, what he has inherited. I would say compared to that, his turned around. It's one thing to actually do well in a state which already has a fantastic reputation for progress. But to do it in Uttar Pradesh, it's always been associated with what? The badlands of India or the cow belt. What a pejorative thing to say about a country that uh, civilizationally has a certain place of worship for cow. To use it as a pejorative is a cow belt, Hindi heartland, right? I'd say that the way of the future is to combine both sides. Infrastructure with a very clear position on law and order. Is he your pick for the next PM? I have no idea because I'd like to see how he goes in terms of his appeal beyond his home territory, okay? He has to because you see there is going to be a Hindi barrier in Tamil Nadu. Right, and uh, he also wears the saffron, which I'm very happy about. Okay, I have no problems with it. I'd want to see how that translates to his ability to reach out to people. Then also is the important factor of his ability to handle international optics. The mm. two level ki One is pan India. The second is the global stage. Both, which could be his weakness. I'm not saying it's a weakness. I'd simply say it's an area because you see, I'm someone who looks at it's a weakness if someone cannot work on it or does not have the ability to actually work on it. But if someone shows the ability to work on something, I'd say it's an area for work. Okay, that's how I put it. I don't have enough research or facts and figures to uh, 
argue on the left's behalf. I'll tell you what the left will say. And counter killings. Okay. That's what they'll latch on to. They'll say law and order. Ask the women folk, or even men folk for that matter, or to use their language, the non-binary gender identity. Okay. If they're safer in Uttar Pradesh today as compared to yeah. before. This right? I can validate. Because I've been to Uttar Pradesh a lot. This is the general land, right? Safer than ever. Lucknow has become such a place to go to. It's brilliant. Um, Hasrat Ganj in Lucknow mimics cannot place in Delhi mm. in terms of its architecture. Mm. What a happening place. Of course, I'm not going to say that. Let's use it as the basis for everything else. But other cities also. It's not as if this is one of those states where it has only a couple of cities to showcase. It's trying to do... So you have a Prayag. You have a Kashi. Uh, uh, you have uh, a Noida. You have a Lucknow. A lot of these cities... Each of them is capable of generating a lot of income because they have traditional industries. Badhoi, which is about 60 kilometers away from Varanasi, is known for being the carpet uh, town of the world. Almost most carpets that go from Bharat have some contribution from that place. Mm. Similarly, several places have each, uh, let, let's say, their own industries, their own legacy of industries. So it's actually a sleeping giant which is awakened. Mm. And Uttar Pradesh can turn around. The two states which, frankly speaking, are beautiful, culturally rich, and which have the resources. Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Turn them around. Bharat will see greater strides towards uh, progress on an overall level. One, because of the sheer size and the scale of the populations. Mm. I've not had the good fortune of going to Bihar, in fact. But everyone who's been there says, what a green and beautiful state. What is it that Bihar lacks in terms of resources? And let me challenge anyone when they say that Biharis don't have the IQ for it. No, not at all. Bureaucracy, they're fantastic. Engineering, they're bloody good at it. Yeah, they're probably the most high IQ community. Exactly, but they're need, among the best. You need to go and find that high IQ when you interact with them. If you go to uh, your, let's say, your uh, railway depots or let's say your IRSME establishment, which is where you manufacture your coaches and you repair, most of them are Biharis. They're bloody good at it. They don't believe in passing off communication skills as knowledge. So their emphasis is not on English, rightly so. They focus on core strengths, manufacturing sector. And IAS, there's a huge Bihar contribution there because they have a legacy contribution there. Mm. So these two states, I think, are to watch out for. Madhya Pradesh uh, has turned around the agriculture sector brilliantly. And now it's focusing on industrial policy. Okay, I should know this. I'm the special counsel for the state government of Madhya Pradesh and the Basmati litigation. And uh, I know how they've turned this around. Uh, I've, I'm just coming from Indore. I, I had a, a lecture last evening at Ujjain. Enlightened students, youngsters, culturally rooted, very proud of their uh, civilizational origins, their religious origins, and eager and keen to perform and show that do not associate Madhya Pradesh with the Chambal Valley of the past. They, they come with that kind of zeal and ambition. So what is stopping them? If there are right opportunities provided, these three states, huge, large, resource-rich, can turn the India story around, the Bharat story around, fully. By selling things to the rest of the world? Yes. You know, one of the things that's under tap is what I call the branding economy from the perspective of intellectual property. I'll give you a simple example. Sure. What do you think of France when you come to, when you think of, let's say, foods, liquids, champagne, Yeah. right? Scotland, you're looking at Scotch, uh, Scott whiskey, right? Or the sweet, uh, uh, sorry, the tweed jackets on top, right? Why? One is creating a product. The second is to create an ecosystem around it and quality standards so that you know champagne key quality, yeho. This is how it should be. Swiss cheese, feta cheese, Greek cheese, or whatever it is, right? During world trade negotiations, these countries are fighting for rights over spirits and cheeses because mm -hmm. that's their primary industry. Mm -hmm. Each of these states has such products to offer across the board on the manufacturing side as well as on the agriculture side. If you were to actually create a brilliant branding economy and quality control economy for each of these things, you are ensuring the local population stays there. What does that do? Stops the local population from running to cities and crowding cities. The local brain drain. Exactly. Because then there's so much of stress on the cities mm -hmm. and people are leaving the villages. Mm -hmm. That leads to all kinds of problems. So if you're able to give them enough empowerment and enough enabling metrics, which give them incentive to stay back, thrive, <coughs> when people are watching TV, what are they looking at? Delhi is like this, Mumbai is like this. If you don't have to go there, people say, we'll stay here. We'll turn this into a different place altogether. That's the trick. And so local branding of the economy and giving it a foothold and, and let's say the support that the state can is where I think the, the entire trick is. Madhya Pradesh has started doing it. Yeah? The entrepreneurial perspective here is that I think a bunch of generations have missed out on marketing 101s and branding 101s there. Probably this new under 16, under 14 generation is the up game. because of Geo, because of YouTube, just the internet reaching there. So the startup culture has gone to the tier 2 and the tier 3 cities. Yeah. And using their traditional strengths. It's not as if they're suddenly talking about apps. They're talking about startups for their uh, karigari, for their carpets, for let's say whatever they manufacture locally. Mm -hmm. Here, there's a huge leap in people's understanding of what is known as the GI tag, the geographical indications tag, the Kanchipuram silk, Basmati rice, right? That tag is what gives it value. 
if you remove the basmati tag from the rice it sells at 500 rupees per quintal if you add it it's 1500 bucks mm. that's the difference that is the importance of branding i would have asked you how you actually solve this problem of teaching people branding and marketing but i think it's happening right through the internet correct so it's kind of a function of time uh, there are rough edges but they learn yeah goes to show why shark tank india has taken off so much so right, there's right. actually that much interest in correct correct, uh, correct. raising money i etc. just hope or at least i wish it weren't as elitist as it is shark tank yes what's your criticism i think uh, some of the judges could perhaps lower their snobbery you want to take names no okay because names take away uh, attention from the content okay fine. i'm interested in the issue okay. i'm saying it's a good idea you have a great platform you can actually help build the india story from a startup perspective maybe park your elitism aside for a while i'm not accusing everyone some and hope to actually uh, encourage people a bit more especially those who may not have the, the grooming skills of the social graces that you expect of them yeah. that's it the one thing i figured about lawyers generally is that they know a lot of shit that the general masses don't right about the reality of certain things or incidents or national narratives right is there anything you'd like to bring to the forefront through the podcast in terms of more people should know about this see most people have a very academic perspective to how courts work or how the legal process works they're like is fact me ye natija kaise aa sakta hai okay and they don't realize that there are serious human considerations that go into a legal analysis i give you a certain set of facts and i approach this very same set of facts very little chance that both of us arrive at the same outcome okay mm-hmm. because both of us are applying our own conditioning and mm-hmm. our own preconceived notions to those set of facts yeah. to say that there is something called as objectivity in a legal process it has to be forced through the creation of tests but otherwise people typically go to the conclusions that they otherwise would have gone anyways despite the facts okay to stop them from following their biases is why you need an objective test us pe bhi bahut sare differences hote hain as someone who practices day in and day out same set of facts different set of people you get widely different outcomes okay widely and widely different outcomes that's a function of human nature most people don't understand this at all they like ye kaise ho sakta hai are ye mathematics nahi hai bhai hmm okay this is not mathematics it's it's a part of lots of humanities interpretation is a subjective game yeah. you may have certain rules but still how those rules are applied will change from mind to mind people to people person to person okay that's what i said okay which before i begin my spiritual questioning uh is there any national issue that people should know more about uh, something that i have spoken often about as a lawyer uh, not remotely as a campaigner uh, is how our temples are under state control at least in 15 states okay and how that translates to degradation of the cultural ecosystem of hindus the alienation of our real estate uh, the dissipation of our liquid uh, liquid resources smuggling of our artifacts okay organized smuggling with yeah. police officials state uh, uh, government officials for the you know, hindu religious and charitable endowment departments officials along with international smugglers it's a huge racket okay that's very active right now. very active hugely active and those who are seen as cracking down on that particular uh, network are the ones who get hounded by the state i've seen that including really? police honest police officials really yeah 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 so i've represented the dig of the idol wing former dig of the tamil nadu state police one manike vel tiger of a man and uh, how he was appointed as a uh, a special uh, he was given extensions to pursue this work after his retirement he ended up pointing fingers to uh, his former colleagues or people from the uh, police department with evidence the state machinery fell on him like a ton of bricks mm. and we had to go to the supreme court to point out what is happening here and so on and so forth so uh it's not an elitist issue it's not a stormity cup where only the rich and the affluent think about it it's a nerve center it's a civilization identity you fought and died for generations together to protect this and now you're trying to make money off it. exactly okay cool uh where is that story going um i'd say the awareness level has gone up in the last 5 years state governments know for a fact that abhi election ka bhi mudda ban chuka hai ya ban raha hai okay so once something becomes an election issue that means it has acquired enough traction critical mass to mil gaya hai now we have to see how to go forward from there so a lot of people are working i contribute only as a practicing hindu who's a practicing lawyer that's it uh before the final segment i'm going to take my phone out yeah and i'm going to <clears throat> do a very basic exercise that we do for a bunch of our guests which is i'll type your name in the youtube search bar ah, okay and i'll see what like some uh the worst thing that comes is my pre weight loss face <laughs> <laughs> okay. 109 kilos and 84.6 is like i'm wearing a fat suit like they wear in friends okay nice <laughs> interesting we will look for that You've got a lot of J. Sai Deepak Gandhi, J. Sai Deepak debate, J. Sai Deepak versus OAC, huh. J. Sai Deepak latest. People are looking forward to your predictions about the future in some ways. Right. Uh, one top one is J. Sai Deepak beer biceps. <laughs> I mean, this assumes we've spoken and this is not our first conversation. Right. Uh, that's pretty much it, dude. I think people are taking these left-oriented uh, 
celebrities and putting their stuff next to your name to see what i've said on it yeah okay do the amount people have requested to get you on the show is insane <sighs> okay people keep commenting about rajesh nandi and abhijit chavla and you're the third guy people keep commenting about but you've not even appeared on the show until today right so it says a lot about just the general amount of work you're doing like how many heads and hearts you're affecting <sighs> So I wish you luck, man. Thank you. Thank so you. on behalf of the whole team for coming on the show and uh, just kind of exploding <laughs> with all this information. This Thank is, you for the hospitality. Yeah, bro. Uh, this is on behalf of, of Team Ajio and Team yeah. TRS. Okay. So it's a little hamper, it's a little heavy. So just be careful. This was the end to the video. So I understand that this man is uh, pro Hindu, uh, but uh, and talks about temples and he's mentioned that here briefly, but. Um, it's interesting when he, uh, when Rear had mentioned there are so many people requesting him. So what is it about this guy that you guys are liking so much? If you could let me know in the comments below. So to me, looking at the end the whole podcast, he does come across, obviously he's a lawyer, obviously he's super um, educated. He seems like a, a rational uh, type of person and... Um, I'm just looking at if there was anything um, in the comments that I've made. Uh, actually, I quite you know what what he's mentioned that people are moving from villages to the big cities, and that is creating a problem for the the kind of village infrastructure. And I wonder, like, if you could maybe talk to me a bit more in the comments about what what, what is transpiring as a problem would be would be very uh very interesting i find i found this podcast more like a get to know him type of a podcast uh, um yeah uh, and uh it was definitely informative but it was a lot of i think very local nuanced stuff that i did not get to be honest so i don't feel like there is that much that i can contribute or or comment on um yeah, I, I like the fact uh, where he talks about um, uh, uh, the the academic process towards law and uh, how the interpretation of the same data is subjective. I, I found this very interesting and absolutely very, very true. And I think I mentioned in this couple of videos that because you come from a different uh, background, different culture, different socioeconomical conditions, you know, whatever your beliefs are, you will try to see different things perhaps than, than someone else. So it's it's always very important to, to bear it in mind how you're reading people. You're reading it from your idea of the world, from what you know, and they are reading you from what they know. And this is what can create arguments, disagreements, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, I would then, on a final note, encourage everyone to be a bit more open-minded and, and seeing like, okay, if they, they are different to me in these matters, like, you know, what they say, how can I, you know, let's say not get insulted or worked up or whatever else in just the day-to-day -day life. Um, so I can live a better balance, a more open-minded life and contribute better to, to my family and to my society. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching this part two with me. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give a thumbs up, share a like, and subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you next one. Until then, please do take care. I'm sending much, much love. Bye-bye.